But the other effect I want to talk about, you'll notice that big white chunk of ice uh, to the south of the area where the heat is building up. And Greenland has been undergoing an accelerated melting. Uh, this is one of the seasonal rivers that, well, this is a moulin, a famous image from the University of Manchester. You can see the scientists at the top. But here is a seasonal a river that has accelerated in its melting. And if you want to know what uh, melting ice looks like as it goes into the sea, raising sea level, this is what it looks like. That's why uh, we've already had these uh, lateral surges, uh, why that house in Alaska and this one in Canada fell into the sea. The Maldives recently added a new budget line in their budget last year, marked to buy a new country. <laughs> Another of the uh, low-lying Pacific nations uh, also just began that debate this year. For every one meter of sea level rise, 100 million climate refugees are, are, are put on the move. If Greenland ever did melt, or West Antarctica, uh, the consequences uh, would be 450 million climate refugees. And speaking of Antarctica, the recent studies just last month confirmed that the entire continent is in a negative uh, uh, ice balance. But West Antarctica is the one that is heating up the most. It's almost exactly the same size as Greenland, and the recent studies show uh, that, that the temperature increases there are, are far greater. Uh, this actually underrepresents what's happening on the, uh, on the peninsula where it's greater still. That's where those ice shelves have, have been falling off. My wife Tipper took this picture on our vacation in, in um, British Columbia last year. You can see what our vacations are like. <laughs> um, this glacier in Peru provides uh, the drinking water for this city. And the flows are increasing, but as the ice goes away, much of the water will as well. In California, this month, the ice pack is 40% below normal, and the reservoirs are very low, and the forecast uh, is, is for the worst drought ever. Uh, most significantly, there's 100 times as much ice and snow in the Himalayas as all the rivers in uh, Europe, and of course the Indus and the Ganges and the Brahmaputra and the Salween or Irrawaddy, the Mekong, the Yangtze, and the Yellow all originate in that ice field, and 40% of the world's people get uh, almost half of their drinking water from it. Those lakes, this is a satellite photo of uh, uh, one of the ridges in the Himalayas, and those lakes at the top of the image were glaciers just a short time ago. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on the uh, hurricanes and uh, the uh, view of many scientists that the intensity of hurricanes is affected by the warming oceans, but not much was made of the fact that one million people were evacuated from New Orleans again this year. Is that the new normal? Cedar Rapids, Iowa, had a 500-year flood last summer. Nine, all nine rivers in Iowa flooded simultaneously. This river crested above the previous record by 11 feet higher than ever in history. That's not a small increment, a 500-year floodplain. Uh, Cedar Rapids is still devastated by this flood. It has not recovered. Uh, and this area of the world is used to flooding, but new records are being set. 13 countries in Central Africa uh, flooded a little over a year ago. Uh, in Mexico, uh, in Brazil. And of course, uh, as you know, the same uh, heat that puts more moisture into the atmosphere and causes larger downpours sucks it out of the soil. And the drought uh, conditions that are deeper and uh, more difficult in many countries around the world are increasing. Australia uh, is still gripped by a, a four-year drought. Uh, uh, this is the 
Murray Darling River Basin, which is normally from one shore to the other. 40% of Australia's agriculture comes from that river basin. And of course in Georgia, Tennessee and Georgia had an altercation over Georgia's <coughs> uh, improper effort to redraw the state line to get a reservoir. Uh, the drying soils and the, uh, the, the fewer number of uh, days with frost have contributed to a, an extraordinary die-off of trees in the West, and the increase in fires is quite significant. The largest fires in uh, the history of Georgia and Florida, respectively, several times in the last uh, three years, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have had to be evacuated from their homes in California. The government of Greece almost fell a year and a half ago because of the record fires there. And then this month, uh, the highest temperatures ever measured in Australia. And of course, uh, the fires in southeastern Australia still going on as we meet here uh, have caused a tragic loss of almost 300 lives and have ignited a new nationwide debate uh, in Australia that is very much focused on global warming. Uh, and this uh, iconic picture has gone around the world. These little koalas usually uh, avoid people at all costs. Maybe you've seen some of the interviews with that fireman I have. Uh, all around the world, uh, the fires from January to September of this past year, now the pixels are rather dominated by these uh, fires, so they seem much larger than they are, but they're large enough. Uh, this is creating weather-related disasters that are completely unprecedented. On the left-hand side of this image, you will see what used to be the norm. And in recent years, the increase has been quite startling, four times as many in the last 30 years as in the previous 75. And the increases are, are continuing. This has a huge economic uh, impact. And when you look at it in the context of the history of these, uh, Fires. This from the Center of Research on the Epidemiology of the Disasters. It's quite startling. Uh, in the last five years, we've seen a continuation of the buildup of CO2 in the troposphere. Uh, by the most commonly used measure, we're now at 386.7, uh, compared, of course, to 280 in the pre-industrial era. And this image is a rather new one that uh, um, shows the extreme depletion of oxygen in a vast area of the Eastern Pacific and on either side of the Indian subcontinent. Jane Lipchenko, whose uh, hearing took place yesterday for confirmation as the new head of NOAA, uh, uh, talked to me at some length about this uh, image. Uh, and this is more significant than just the increase in dead zones. This is a huge area of the ocean.